everyone, I'm Mind, and this is every single LEGO Ninjago Nia minifigure ever made, at least from 2011 to early 2023. This is, of course, my sixth and final video in my Every Ninja Minifigure series, so after you finish this video, make sure to go check out my video on Zane, Jay, Kai, Cole, and Lloyd, if you haven't seen those yet. Additionally, while this is the last ninja I have left to cover, I still want to continue doing videos in the style, so let me know in the comments what kind of Every Minifigure video you want to see next. I could update some of my older ones because I believe my Zane, Jay, and Lloyd are not up to date, or I could do a different ninja Jago characters such as like Sensei Wu, or I could do something like Every Serpentine, or any ideas that you guys have. So let me know in the comments if there's any of those you'd like to see, and if this video gets to 1,000 likes, I'll begin working on the next one. And then finally, one last thing before we get started, when I say every Nia minifigure, I am counting every Nia minifigure that contains exclusive parts. So things like magazine exclusive figures and unmasked versions, I don't count as different minifigures because they're just combinations of different parts found in other Nia minifigures. So this is every Nia minifigure that has some sort of unique print on it. But with all that being said, let's take a look at every single LEGO Ninjago Nia minifigure ever made. So Nia is an interesting one because she has not had nearly as many suits as the other ninja. For one, she wasn't a ninja for the first four years of the theme, so she only got one minifigure a year. Year, if even that. But beyond that, in the later years, she doesn't get all the gimmick suits that a lot of the other characters have. So as such, this video is probably going to be a bit shorter than my other Every Minifigure videos. But anyway, yeah, we are starting here in 2011 with the original Nia suit. Now, I actually just reviewed this suit a couple days ago with my Garmin Dark Fortress review, and in that video, I was surprised to see how well this minifigure actually holds up. Like, 2011 figures are very nostalgic, but compared to the level of detail of modern minifigures, a lot of times they just don't hold up, and that's fine. I mean, it's a different time. But no, this minifigure is genuinely really good. The level of detail in this torso so it was incredible. I love like the metallic gold fireballs. They look super cool. The white trim on her kimono looks great too. I think it's just a very elegant outfit and feels very detailed for 2011. Yeah, I think this is a fantastic minifigure and honestly still holds up really well today. Now she doesn't have any back torso print as you just saw because back torso print was not nearly as common in 2011. However, something kind of cool that she does have is two faces. Now this is very common nowadays. Back in 2011, she was the only Ninjago minifigure to have a double-sided face. The first face just has a sort of neutral expression. I think this is fine for Nia. It's not as angry as someone like the other ninjas like original expressions were, which I think is better. Just a plain neutral, I think, is like the perfect in-between. But then as I mentioned, she does have an alternate face where she has like a printed on ninja mask over her mouth. I suppose this is meant to be like a predecessor to the half masks. And I think it's actually really cool the way they did that. It gives her a super unique look. I also love like the red eyeshadow that she has. Yeah, really well done minifigure. Genuinely really still love this one to this day. Now coming to 2012, we have the very first Samurai X Nia minifigure. And this is another one that I think is also pretty great for its time. This helmet piece was new for this wave, it was the same one they used for Lord Garmadon, and this mouth guard piece was also all new, and while it is used on like a lot of different characters nowadays, it was very unique for the time, and I still think it holds up pretty well. Gunmetal Grey is also just an excellent color, and it's actually really cool that she goes on to use that on her ninja suits later on. Then you've got like a bit of gold at the top of that part, and then the kendo armor wall, like it's definitely very bulky, and her later Samurai X outfits definitely are more unique because they show off her torso print a little bit better. I don't know, something about how armored this actually is makes her feel like an actual samurai, so I have always liked that. Now, if they had stuck with the same armor piece for, like, what, 12 years, then I might have gotten a little bit tired of it. But the fact that this is pretty much the one and only Nia suit to ever use it, I think it actually works pretty well here. And there's her full torso print with the armor removed. It does look good, but I feel like the bright red's a little overpowering. Though you can see there's actually a bit of her kimono underneath, too. I never noticed that as a kid. That's actually pretty cool. And then you can see her face print is actually all new for this wave. However, it is very, very similar to the original Nia face print. Just some slight differences between them, but they are there. And then turning around, she once again has an alternate face. However, it is a different alternate face than she had in the previous year, where she just has this very angry expression. Now, I don't think that fits Nia the best. However, it works when she has her Samurai Axe helmet on, and then she's got her original Fireball logo around the back, too. So I wouldn't say this one's as good as the 2011 Nia. However, it's one that will always have a special place in my heart, and I still think it holds up fairly well. Now, skipping 2013 and coming directly to 2014, here we have rebooted Nia. She, of course, did not get any new minifigures in 2013. But yeah, 2014 with rebooted, she did get this minifigure. And I feel like this minifigure is actually really underappreciated. I mean, I don't know how the overall, like, LEGO community feels, but I feel like I never really appreciated this minifigure for what it is, because yeah, this one is fantastic. I really, really love how this looks. That torso design especially, I think, is like what really solidifies this minifigure for me. The fact that like none of the actual red piece is peeking through, it's just black, gold, dark red, and silver. They capture like the shape of the armor perfectly, and it does a great job like making her feel very bulky without having like the actual physical samurai armor piece that she had on her previous suit. I also love how she has like the cloth that comes down to the bottom of her legs. That's nice to see just because she is a rebooted minifigure, and she's one of the few rebooted minifigures that has leg printing. But beyond that, the design is just fantastic. And then you can see she's sticking with the same helmet and mask design that she had in her previous iteration, though now she has a black helmet instead of a gunmetal gray one. And then she just has silver ZX armor out the back, which I honestly think works pretty well here. I think this is the only time Samurai X Nia uses silver, so it does give this suit like a very distinct and unique look. 
And yeah, I genuinely just love it all around. Removing her helmet and armor there, you can see her full face print. And I'm just not realizing, I think my version of this figure might be misprinted. Because when I was a kid and I got this figure, I always thought this was a really interesting face because I'd never seen it used on anything else, but then they never used it for Nia again. And I'm like, huh, they made a new face for Nia. Why didn't they reuse that in later years? But I just checked Brick Lake and apparently this is supposed to be just like the generic Lego City like female face that has like the bright red lips. And I can see that. However, the lips here aren't red, they're brown. So I guess I got a misprint that has brown lips instead of red lips. Unless Bricklink has this figure wrong. I don't know. You guys have to let me know in the comments. If you have this figure, does it have this face? Or does it have the one with the red lips? But yeah, very curious. Regardless, I think the more like brown lips do look cooler, give Nia a more distinct feel. Even if the face print doesn't exactly capture Nia's personality, it's still better than just like reusing a generic Lego City face. And then turning her around, yeah, fantastic back coast print as well. You have her original symbol right there, more of that silver armor. I think this figure looks really, really cool. Definitely one that I appreciate a lot more now that I've reviewed it again. Now coming to 2015, there was two Nia minifigures released this year. We have yet another Samurai X Nia for Tournament of Elements, and then we have the very first Ninja Nia for Possession, seasons four and five respectively. And Tournament Nia is probably my least favorite Samurai X Nia suit. However, I will say I do appreciate how different every Samurai X is. Like so far, they haven't really repeated any color schemes. This one leans more into black, which the previous ones haven't done. And then she also has a bit of dark green in her torso, which does look quite cool. It gives her a very unique look. I just feel like the suit's not as elegant as some of the others. However, the level of detail is still pretty great. And the gunmetal gray shoulder pads are a really nice touch. But yeah, I do want to give this minifigure credit. I actually do like quite a few aspects of it. I just feel like it doesn't do the same thing to pop like the other ones do. She once again has an all new face print. I don't think a Nia minifigure has reused a face print yet. So if we remove that helmet piece, you can see she's got a facial expression right there. This, I don't know how I feel about. Definitely does not capture her personality from the show. It's all right, I guess, for what it is. I appreciate at the very least that it's unique. It's not just reusing a Lego City face. However, like the 2011-2012 face definitely captured Nia better. However, the cool part about this figure though is the alternate face where she's got like these digital eyes on like this green panel. This is like reminiscent of the digital mask that she had on her suit in the first season, though not exactly accurate. However, it is still very cool and helps give Samurai X a very different look. And then removing the armor and her helmet, there you can see what her back torso print looks like, and it's more of just that green Samurai armor. Yeah, I think it's a solid minifigure, but as I said, it's probably my least favorite of the Samurai X suits, at least of the original ones. And then we have the very first Ninja Nia right here. Now this figure was super cool for the time. For one, this figure is so different from all the other Possession Ninja, so it really makes her pop and stand out. Additionally, we've never really gotten Ninja with two colors like this before. Like, we've gotten black and their main color, but a two-color Ninja where one of the colors isn't black, that was entirely new, so it made this figure really pop and really stand out. I like how they kept the dark red as sort of callback to her Samurai X days. And the gold armor, as well as like the gold detailing, really makes this minifigure shine. And I love that dual molded mask piece. Just looks so fantastic all around. The only real bad part about this minifigure, however, is the face print. This is when they just started using this generic Lego City face on her. And this will continue throughout 2016, as well as the beginning of 2017, which is really disappointing. It doesn't look like Nia at all. But even if they'd stuck with like the Samurai X face print, right? This one right here. Well, this this one doesn't really look like Nia, at the very least it's unique to her. This one is like so clearly not a Ninjago character. I always really hated that they included that face. It was just super lame. So yeah, as fantastic as the rest of the minifigure is, that part is super disappointing. So you will see for like the next two sections of this video, when I was younger I ordered a bunch of extras of this face and I put it on all my Nia minifigures to replace this one. So if you see this face on any future minifigures in this video, that's not the face print it actually comes with. It's supposed to be this one. But yeah, I wanted to swap it out to make it look a little bit better. Face print aside though, there's a full look at her torso print with everything removed. And then turning her around, there's a look at her back torso print, where she has like her original Fireball Phoenix design, but now it's redesigned to look more like water. And I think that's a really cool touch. I really love how they redesigned that, because obviously the original design was based on fire, because she was the sister of the fire ninja. But then they sort of retroactively went, oh no, that wasn't fire, that was water. And it actually really works. And I think it looks fantastic here. So yeah, this minifigure is really, really great. I think it does the dark red and light blue color scheme absolutely perfectly. However, as you will see, I will get tired of that color scheme real fast. So now let's move on to the next minifigures. Now moving to 2016 and season six Skybound. There was only really one Nia minifigure for this wave, of course Skybound Nia. But then there was also this non-canon Samurai X Nia released in a Lego store exclusive minifigure set. So I'll be covering that here too. So Skybound Nia I think is pretty good. You can see she uses a dark red and black color scheme overall with a little bit of blue. And my biggest issue with that is I just feel like it's not the best color scheme for her. This is the only type she really did this where she didn't really have much blue at all. And 
went with dark red as the main color, and I don't know, I'm just not the biggest fan of that. We already have a red ninja, and Kai has used dark red in the past, and like, yes, we have a blue ninja as well, but Jay really never used the same blue that Nia did. Additionally, she's the water ninja, so her being in this dark red outfit, I don't know, never been my favorite thing. It was cool how many new pieces she got, because all the other Skybound ninja were just reusing pieces from the Deep Stone Wave, the only new parts were their armor and torso, but no, Nia is entirely new here, which is nice to see, but yeah, I'm just not the biggest fan of the color scheme. I do really like the Skybound suits overall, though, so even if this one's definitely not my favorite, it is still a fairly decent suit, but yeah, I just feel like the dark red, especially on top of the black torso, really doesn't pop at all. I much would have preferred a blue color scheme. There she is with her mask and armor removed, as I mentioned, that's not the face she came with, and then turning her around, you can see she's actually got her Samurai X symbol at the back, which that's a cool touch, sort of call back to her Samurai X days. I think I would have slightly preferred, like, the Fireball Phoenix symbol, though wait, I guess actually that's meant to be built into the Arajitsu logo right here. But yeah, overall, I think this figure's solid, I just feel like the color choice is a little bit strange. And I think the designers pretty much agreed, because this is the one and only time she used this color scheme. But anyway, now moving to this figure, this figure is really weird. This is a non-canon Samurai X outfit that was randomly released in a LEGO Store exclusive minifigure set. And there's one aspect of this figure that I really, really like, but the rest of it just feels unnecessary. It's not bad by any means, like, I think the design of the torso and legs does look good, but in my opinion, most of the other Samurai X outfits are just better than this. I think I might like it a little bit more than the Tournament of Elements one, but it's very similar in design to her original 2012 Samurai X outfit, though with black as the base color instead of red, and then obviously she does not have, like, the big bulky armor piece, rather she just has the ZX armor out the back. But it is a unique looking Samurai X outfit at the very least. Like, this exact color scheme I don't believe is used on any of the other ones. However, the very cool part about this figure is the face prints, so taking this helmet off. First off, the front of that face, you can see she's got, like, a happy smirk. And this is easily the best original Nia face that we ever got. Well, I feel like it still doesn't perfectly capture her personality from the show, it's still significantly better than, like, the tournament face, and there's a lot more personality in it, too. And obviously, it's significantly better than just, like, the generic Lego City face that she'd be getting in most of the sets at this point. But the really cool part is actually when you turn this minifigure around, the alternate face, while the 2014 Samurai X Nia did some sort of digitalize the sort of callback to 2012, this is a way more accurate version of those digitalized that she had in the show. I still don't think this is 100% accurate, but it's a lot closer, and I think that looks really, really cool with the helmet on. So if you were to make, like, a custom Samurai X, taking this headpiece off and putting them on the original, like, 2012 Samurai X would look perfect, but I am happy that this figure finally found a way to include that face print in a set, and I do think it looks really good. And then finally, removing her armor and turning her around, you can see she actually does not have any back torso print at all. That's a little bit surprising, because that's not something we see all too often, but I guess because it was a LEGO Star Schools of minifigure pack, maybe they didn't have the same budget. And since this is a non-canon suit anyway, it doesn't really bother me. So yeah, I think this is a fine figure, it's just a weird one. I don't know why it exists, I don't think it needed to exist. I do really appreciate it for that new headpiece that I introduced, however, I really couldn't care less about the rest of it. It looks fine, but it's far from her best suit, and I don't know, if they have the budget to create an exclusive minifigure for a LEGO Store exclusive minifigure set, I feel like there was a million other better options than this. But at the very least, that face print is really good, and probably the best Nia face print from her, like, original design. Now, still in 2016, we have Day of the Departed, where there was two Nia minifigures released. We just have regular Day of the Departed Nia, and then we have Air Jitsu Nia. Now, regular Day of the Departed Nia, I like. They do something very similar that they did with Lloyd, where for most of the Ninja, their Day of the Departed suits were a combination of their 2011 and 2012 suits, but since Nia never had a ninja suit in 2011 or 2012, her Day of the Departed suit is basically just a 2011 suit. However, unlike Lloyd, who was basically designed to be exactly like what a 2011 Lloyd suit would look like, Nia, they played with it a little bit more. All the other ninja have their belt like on their waist, while Nia's is up a little bit higher. So I'm not the biggest fan of the inconsistency, I wish that was just moved down a little bit. That's a very small thing, but it does bother me. But yeah, I think the rest of it does look good. Still sticking with this red and blue color scheme, which I think works all right. And I do like how that phoenix symbol is there on the brown ropes. She reuses the hood piece from her possession suit, and then she just has like the brown skybound armor out the back, and then taking that off, you can see she just got that generic like city face, and turning her around, there's looking her back towards the front as well. Yeah, I think this is a good figure. I don't think it's as good as possession Nia, but for what day the party was trying to accomplish with their minifigures, I think they did a pretty good job here, and the colors definitely really pop. And then we have Ojitsu Nia, who is super interesting. The Ojitsu figures are meant to be like an energy burst, like it's them being entirely engulfed by their element, and every other Ojitsu figure is black and then the ninja's color. However, Nia here, they went dark red instead of the black, to more match her possession suit, just like all the other ninja did. And I find 
that really interesting, actually. I'm not sure if I like that or if I would have preferred black to match with all the others, but it is definitely a very unique and very cool look. I especially love all the metallic blue printing on the torso. I feel like metallic blue is not a color we see in printing all too often. But yeah, she's got like her phoenix design right there, which looks incredible. I love how like the waves crash at the bottom at her legs. She comes with an unprinted dark red ZX hood too, which was an all new color for that part. And then she's got that phoenix symbol at the back again, but it's like crashing waves. I do think the actual printing on this figure is fantastic. And then taking the hood piece off, you can see her face print, where you can see it's a very similar expression to the one on the non-canon Samurai Exnia that we just looked at. And that looks really good too. I love like the bright yellow eyes and like the water around it. This is another fantastic minifigure, probably one of the best Nia figures. My only criticism is I don't know how I feel about the dark red. Maybe black or something would have been more interesting or even leaning more into the blue. But regardless of the base colors, the printing here is just so good that it doesn't really matter. This figure just looks fantastic all around. So I'd say overall, both of these are pretty solid. Air Jitsu Nia is probably one of my favorites and Day of the Departed Nia is good. I like it for what it is, but there's definitely others that I prefer. Now coming to 2017 Hands of Time, here we have have, of course, Hands of Time Nia, and this is one of the best Nia minifigures, and probably just one of the best Ninjago minifigures of all time. This figure just looks fantastic all around. The Hands of Time suits are some of the most detailed ninja suits we've ever gotten, and while some people like them and some people don't, I think Nia is undoubtedly the best one. This figure really does what the Skybound suit should have done, where it really incorporates a lot of the blue here, and this was also the first Nia suit to really use Gunmetal Gray as their secondary color scheme, rather than using the dark red. However, one thing I really like is how they still incorporate the dark red here, it just uses like the trim on her arm. Armor. You can see it's used on her legs and then at her hips, and then it's incorporated onto her torso as well. Good bit of metallic printing too. And all the Hands of Time suits have these black arms and black armor, and that's definitely my least favorite part of them. However, I feel like it works pretty well on Nia. Because Gunmetal Gray and Black are such similar colors, I feel like the black arms don't feel as out of place here as they do on some of the other ninja. And then the recolored hood piece is great too. All of the other ninja this way have reused their Day of the Departed hoods, but Nia actually got an all new one here. And again, just that blue and Gunmetal Gray, fantastic color combination. Nia also got an all new face front for one set this wave. In another set, she just reused the standard Lego City face. But you can see this face print is very similar to the non-canon Samurai X face print, though with some very minor differences. However, it's very nice that that was included in a wide release set, rather than just a LEGO Store exclusive pack. But then turning her around, she has an entirely different alternate face, where you can see she's like sort of in her element. The outline of her eyes are like this slightly blue color, and then the eyes themselves are like yellow, and then she's got this very angry expression. That's very cool, very different from every other like energy ninja. So I think that's yet another thing that makes this figure super unique, and it looks fantastic on her. Back towards the print, I think is really good too. You can see she's got a symbol right there. Lots more of that blue as well as the touches of dark red. Yeah, genuinely, in my opinion, one of the best Ninjago minifigures of all time. From top to bottom, it is fantastic. The only complaint I really have is the black arms, but even still, they don't look terrible, and those are very easily able to be changed if you wanted to do that. Also, in 2017, we had the Lego Ninjago movie, so here are the first three Nia minifigures released for that wave. We, of course, just have the standard movie Nia outfit, the unmasked movie Nia outfit, and then, of course, casual Nia. These were, of course, the very first instance of the redesign, and Nia definitely has a very different look to our original design here. Starting with the actual suit itself though, I mean I think this is fine, I think the biggest issue is it feels a little bit simplistic. The like cloth skirt at her legs I think is pretty cool, however it leaves the legs underneath feeling a little bit boring. The shoes are a nice touch I get, but I don't know, don't do too much for the figure. And then the torso design I think is good, I feel like it could use a little bit more color, like I do like that blue trim there, but that's about all the color there is to it. Everything also feels very flat, especially like that undershirt right there. I don't know, could have used a little bit of texture. And I don't know how I feel about like a bit of her neck showing too. Kind of wish that was covered up a bit more. But I do like the metallic silver printing they used. And probably the coolest part about this figure is the fact that she has arm printing. It's just like a little bit of the silver armor. But I do think that looks quite good and does add a bit to the figure. Then she's just got this symbol at the back that I believe all the movie ninja had. Or if not all of them, a lot of them did. And then of course she uses the movie ninja mask, where they actually use gunmetal gray and black. And I'm not a huge fan of that color scheme. I kind of wish they added in black and like Nia's color of blue, or gunmetal gray and Nia's color of blue, because the black and silver, like, I don't know. This figure really just doesn't pop for me. I feel like it definitely could've used a bit more blue, but it's not terrible for what it is, it's just fine. And then the unmasked version, you can better look at her face print too. This is slightly different to the face print she uses nowadays. You can see she's got this angry expression on one side, which I actually quite like. And then the all new hair piece, which is definitely very detailed, a lot more detailed than her original hair piece. And then removing that hair piece, there you can see her alternate face, where she's got a little bit of a smirk. Both of these are definitely much better expressions than she had in her previous figures. 
So I'm happy that thanks to the movie, it's a proper expression on Nia finally. And then of course at the very end we have casual Nia right here. I always really liked this jacket and striped shirt design. Though unfortunately the yellow printing for like her skin at the top is a little bit discolored. It's just not printed on thick enough. And so you can see the color of the skin right there doesn't really match her face or her hands. So I wish that was printed a little bit better, but the actual design is quite good. I do really love that jacket. And then the ripped jeans are a fun touch too. I actually think I'd like this figure more than the movie Ninja Suit. You can see she's of course got the same exact hairpiece. However, her face print is entirely different. She's got like a happy open mouth smile on one side, and then that same stern expression on the other. Very interesting how they did that, how she has three different expressions across two faces. And then the modern Nia faces are actually a little bit different too. They have this happy face on one side, with this face on the other side, and the angry expression's been pretty much retired. So that's a little bit strange, I definitely prefer this combination of face prints to the more modern ones. But overall, getting three different expressions for Nia was very exciting, and all three of them are useful and great. So I'd say the movie was great for face prints and hair pieces, and I was happy to finally get casual Nia. But my opinion, the movie ninja suit's just fine. Definitely not bad, but just nothing too exciting. They do this color scheme a lot better with Sons of Garmadon. But before we get to that, we have two more movie figures. We have the black and white Wu Crew training suits, and these figures are fine. It's the same exact torso and legs that all the other ninja get, and they're just nothing all too exciting. I mean, they look fine, and it's cool to have the same robes for every single ninja, but yeah, it's the same thing for every single ninja. I don't care all too much about them. I will say something kind of interesting is white Wu Crew training Nia actually came in the Ninjago movie minifigure series, and as such, she has a slightly different face print to just standard Nia. You can see the expressions between these two are very similar, but the collectible minifigures version has much thicker printing, so her eyes, her mole, and her mouth are all a lot bigger. So as such, I feel like this face print actually doesn't work too well, because it almost seems like a knockoff, because that face print is just done in an entirely different style to this one. So yeah, not the biggest fan of that face print, but I guess it's kind of cool that it's slightly different. I don't know, I don't have a ton to say on these two. But yeah, that different face print does not have any alternate face. Well, of course, the Black Wu Crew training suit just uses her standard movie face. Face. But I think that's about all I have to say on these two. But now coming to SOG, here are the two Nia minifigures released that wave. We of course have SOG Nia, and then we have Spinjitsu Master Nia. SOG Nia I think is fantastic. Despite being very similar to Movie Nia, she fixes a lot of the issues I think Movie Nia had, and makes this probably one of my favorite Nia minifigures of all time, and again probably one of my favorite Ninjago minifigures of all time. Just like the movie suit, they don't use too much blue here. However, I feel like the blue they do use actually really pops. But unlike the movie suit, every single aspect of this figure feels really detailed. It doesn't feel like it's lacking in detail anywhere. Lots of different metallic printing. I especially love like those little silver dots. It just adds a great bit of texture to the torso. And those are actually present on the top of the legs as well, which are mostly covered by this all new skirt piece. Slightly different skirt than the one she has for the movie, but I think that actually fits really well here. And then she has very similar shoes at the bottom. However, the color here makes them a little bit more subtle, which I actually do like. And then the colors in her mask are inverted for her mask itself to be gunmetal gray, and then the band around it to be black. And I think that works a lot better here. The mask incorporates with the rest of the robes a lot better. And that helps like the blue water design pop more too. And then taking the armor and skirt pieces off, there's a full look at that leg print. Obviously it does not look as good without the skirt piece, but you can still see what a high level of detail it has. Unlike the movie suit, they didn't just go, oh, you can't see it, so don't print there. Like no, they still made sure it looked good underneath. And that's something I really appreciate about this figure. And then turning her around, you can see her back torso print, which is more just like that silver texture design and more of that blue is incorporated in. Yeah, just a fantastic mini figure all around another one of my favorites. I feel like this figure was like where they really started to truly understand Nia's color scheme. And while I don't like it as much as Hands of Time Nia, I think it's probably a close second. And then Spinjitzu Master Nia is fine. If you've seen my previous videos in the series, you'll know Spinjitzu Masters are probably some of my least favorite suits. In fact, it's definitely my least favorite suit line overall. And Nia, I think, is like one of the better ones, but even still, it's nothing all too amazing. You can see they reuse the black Wukru legs, and they just feel super out of place here. Not a fan of them at all. The torso design is fine. I kind of like the waves rushing out, but I don't know. I feel like it doesn't really do energy bursts the same way a lot of the other figures do. And then turning her around, like the waves on the back, I guess they're fine. But yeah, in my opinion, I just find these figures kind of boring. Luckily, her mask piece combination at least works here. You can't say that for some of the others. But yeah, I'm just not the biggest fan of these figures. They were trying to do something cool, but every other, like, energy burst type figure does this concept a whole lot better. So I find this figure just entirely unnecessary. It's also one of the few gimmick suits we actually have gotten for Nia, which is very disappointing to see, because yeah, this is not the best. Now, also in 2018, we had Season 9, Hunted, and this is yet another one of my favorite Ninjago minifigures of 
all time. I think I've reviewed a set that this figure came in before, and in that video I talked about how I really like the story that this minifigure conveys. Like, Hunted is all about the ninja being hunted down. They're fugitives from the law in that season, they're hiding in the shadows, running away, and I feel like this figure communicates that perfectly, even if you haven't seen the show. For one, the ninja suit seems like very utilitarian, it's not designed to like look really elegant, it's also like very worn down, like the belt's tattered at the bottom, you can see there's like a rope on one leg and then like an armor pad on the other. There's little bits of like blue painted on, but even with them like the paint's rubbing off, the Wu Crew logo's in the top, and the suit itself is like made to look a little bit dirty too. And in my opinion, that's all just so perfect. This looks like an outfit that Neo would wear like sneaking around the streets, and I think the sparse use of blue here actually works really well, because obviously if you're sneaking around the streets, you don't want to be seen, so you don't want all these bright colors on you. There's still a little bit of that blue to still indicate that she is the Water Ninja, but the gunmetal gray really takes over here, and then they use just black and silver and dark gray detailing, and all together just combines to create something really amazing. Then of course she reuses the SOG like upper mask piece with the movie lower mask piece, and I think that works fine. She doesn't even, I believe, wear this mask at all in the show, but it is cool that they still had it for the set. But yeah, this is one of my favorite Ninjago minifigures ever. Really, really love this one. The designers did a fantastic job. Easily my favorite hunted minifigure. Just so, so well done. Now coming to 2019 when Ninjago Legacy as well as Season 10 March of the Oni. Here is the Legacy Nia minifigure that we got. And this figure I think is okay. In terms of color scheme, I think they definitely went backwards because they reverted back to the dark red and blue color scheme. And I don't know, I'm just not the biggest fan of that color scheme. I thought it was really cool in possession Nia, but then Day of the Part of Nia was slightly worse. And then this figure is just like, I don't even care about it. I get the point of Legacy is like it's calling back to Ninjago's past. So I get that it makes sense to use her original color scheme here, but I don't know. I wish they'd gone with the gunmetal instead because as such, this just feels like worse possession. Possession Nia to me because yeah the possession suit just does it so much better so I'm just not a fan of this really at all. I mean the design is fine. The golden dragons are a cool touch I guess. But yeah with all the black on it I feel like the blue really doesn't pop as much and the gold's not incorporated as well here as it is on the possession suit. The new legacy mask I guess it's cool to get in this color and then removing that you could see her full face print and everything as well as the full back torso print. And yeah I guess the design it's like one of the better legacy suits but when I look at this it just feels like a worse version of season 5 Nia. So considering it came out four years later. I don't know. Legacy 1 is not one of my favorite suit lines, and this figure is a pretty good example as to why. Also with Ninjago Legacy though, we got two new Samurai X Nias, which was actually pretty cool. I appreciated how they did include these in sets, not just Ninja Nia, since obviously Ninja Nia doesn't really make sense in any of the Legacy sets. And there's actually two different variants of Legacy Samurai X Nia. This one was in 2019, and this one was in 2020. However, I thought it'd be best to cover them both together. And while these figures definitely aren't my favorite, I am happy that they exist, but they are just two more non-canon Samurai X outfits, and they probably are my least favorites of all the Samurai X suits. The 2019 version goes for like the Kendo armor like the original 2012 version did. However, now they have it in red instead of gunmetal gray, which I'm just not the biggest fan of. I don't know, I don't think it looks the best. I feel like the gunmetal on top of the red was a really iconic part of like what made Samurai X Samurai X. So just ditching that to do a pretty much fully red color scheme, I don't know, I mean it makes the suit very different, but makes it a lot less accurate to what it was trying to be. Removing that armor piece though, now you can see the torso print underneath, where you can see she's got got her original phoenix symbol here, which it is cool to see that they called back to that. And then on the legs, they've got like this golden belt here, which again, like, I don't know, gold was never a major part of the original Samurai X color scheme. Like, I had a little bit of it, but it feels like there's too much here. It doesn't have that gunmetal or silver that she really needed. And as such, yeah, I'm just not the biggest fan. And then you can see the only difference between these two minifigures is, of course, the armor piece. This one has the Mr. E armor in dark red. But then also the symbol on their torso. For some reason, this version has the phoenix symbol, as I just mentioned. But this version has the Samurai X logo. I I assume this is because without the bigger bulkier armor piece, the phoenix symbol would indicate, hey, this is Nia, this isn't Samurai X, and obviously in season one of the show she had her identity hidden, but I just find it really surprising they made that change, because these figures are so similar, and again, they're both non-canon, so did we really need two different torsos? I mean, I'm not going to ever complain about an exclusive part, but it's just weird that there's two of them. But then turning the figures around, you can see their back torso prints, which are entirely identical, and they've just got this printed on red armor. So yeah, I don't think these figures are bad per se, but they just really don't feel like Samurai X next to me, which is a shame. I guess it is cool that they aren't just repeats of any of the previous figures, but I don't know why we somehow have three different non-canon Samurai X outfits. So while I'm glad these guys exist, they really didn't need to. I kind of wish they'd gone for something more accurate, because yeah, these feel like kind of nothing to me. Now coming to Season 11, Secrets of the Forbidden Spinjitsu. Here are the two Nia minifigures released that wave. We of course just have Season 11 Nia, and then we have FS Nia. The regular Season 11 Nia is actually probably my favorite Season 11 suit. Well, I don't like it as much as SOG Nia or Hands of Time Nia. I think it actually does a pretty good job of capturing the blue and gunmetal gray color scheme. Blue is incorporated a lot here, which I actually quite like. It's of course on the actual hood this 
time around, which is nice to see. Much prefer this hood to like the Legacy hood. But I love how vibrant the belt is. The little touches of silver for detailing are nice, as well as the bits of black. Like, I don't know, I think this does gunmetal perfectly. The blue really pops, but the gunmetal doesn't feel flat. I much prefer this to like the way they did the movie figure. And I like how she has a blue undershirt underneath too. That's a lot better than like the skin tone that she had in her movie suit. The gunmetal gray armor piece that all the ninja had this wave also fits in especially well for Nia, because of course that's the same color as the rest of her outfit. And then of course, taking her armor and mask off there gets your back torso print. But yeah, I think this suit is really great all around. I wouldn't call it one of my favorites, but it's definitely super, super solid. And then FS Nia is exactly the same figure, just without the armor piece and with a different hood. She has like the Forbidden Spinjitsu hood that has like this fiery elemental energy coming out the back. And I actually think that works really well. It's still molded in like this transparent light blue with of course the gunmetal gray. And with the FS hood, some of the color combinations work, some of them didn't, but I think this one does actually work really well. However, unfortunately, Nia did not get a Spinjitsu Slam figure like a lot of the other ninja did. So the rest of the figure is exactly the same. She doesn't have any sort of like powered up face or anything, which that kind of stuff would have definitely been really nice to see. But at the very least, that hood piece is really great and I think works fantastic for her. Now coming to season 12 Prime Empire, here are the two Nia minifigures released with that wave. We have Digi Nia and Avatar Nia. Digi Nia is actually quite cool, very unique minifigure. She uses a different shade of blue than she uses on every single other one of her suits, which is a cool fun way to mix things up for Prime Empire. The white secondary color that all the ninja have is really interesting too. Personally, I feel like that's probably the worst part of this figure. Like, I don't know if the white fits the best here, but the two different colored arms are super cool. And yeah, I think the blue side of her body is definitely the coolest part. The, like, blue lights that all the ninja have on their suit this wave actually fit Nia pretty well, because, of course, blue is one of her colors. It doesn't feel as out of place here as it does on, like, Kai or something. And I wish a bit of the blue had somehow been captured on her hood, because her hood does feel a little bit plain to me. However, that's not a huge deal. And I think, overall, this is a fairly decent minifigure. I do like it, and I appreciate how unique it is. The Prime Empire figures, while they're not really useful outside of the context of Prime Empire, I do appreciate how unique they are. They really have their own identity. So this is a figure I'll always appreciate for that. And I think the level of detail in it is really fantastic. I really wish she came in more than one set that wave. Taking the hood and armor pieces off, she of course has an all new face print for this wave. She's got these digital eyes and can just see her mouth underneath it. That of course looks good when the mask is on. But then turning her around, she has an all new just regular expression where you can see she's got one eyebrow down, one eyebrow up, and then just a big wide smile. And I don't know how I feel about that. Like I always appreciate getting new expressions for the ninja, but is this really the expression we needed for Nia? I would have preferred like a worried or scared expression because we don't have that for Nia yet. Because we already had a very similar smiling Nia face, this just has different eyebrow expressions. And this is like a TV show based Nia. I don't think she ever made this face in the show. So yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of that face print. I'm happy it exists. I guess it's better than just the same face print again. But if I was the graphic designers, they definitely would have made a different expression, not just this one again. Back torso print I actually think it looks really good though. Might even like it better than the front. But yeah, very unique, very solid figure all around. I like this one. And then Avatar Nia is fine. She's one of the Avatar figures that just reuses Lego City parts. So it is cool that I completed the suit line, even if it isn't the most interesting. But I guess this is sort of like a teaser for Seabound, because she's got like a little scuba mask on, this like Lego City diving outfit, and then just plain black legs. Cool to get, I guess, but yeah, it's a very uninteresting figure. I am happy they included it in a set though. Now, also in 2020, we had season 13, Master of the Mountain. And with Master of the Mountain, we got Hero Nia. And in my opinion, this is definitely one of the best hero suits. I really, really love how this turned out. The gunmetal gray and silver complement each other really well, so Nia's transition to this sort of like knight outfit actually worked really well. I love the design on the top of this armor right here too. Like the silver chest plate looks great, but the way it has like that blue crackling throughout it, it really captures Nia's element well, while also just looking super cool. I like this sort of like fluffy design she has underneath it too, gives me sort of like viking vibes, and that continues into like the dark tan on this arm, which is a color that we've never really seen Nia use before, so that helps make the suit unique. And then of course she's got silver on the other arm. Then coming down to her legs, she was one of the three ninja that actually got a new leg print for this wave. So I am very happy to see that here. She's sort of got like this chainmail skirt with her belt going over top of that. And I think that actually works pretty well. The only part I'm not the biggest fan of on this figure is how you can sort of see her ninja suit underneath that like fluffy design. And I get that is kind of the point of the figures, but I don't know, I would have preferred a more original knight design. However, that's really the only part of this figure where you can tell that her original suit was underneath it. So as such, I actually don't mind that too much. And then turning around, of course, you can see the back of the armor. And with that removed, there's the full back torso print, which again, I really love. That silver and blue looks so cool. I really, really love how they did that. Overall, yet another really great one. Now moving to 2021 and the island. Here is the one only Nia minifigure for that wave, which is of course Island Nia. And once again, this is another one of like my favorite suits of that entire line. I love how much blue is here. This is probably the gunmetal gray Nia suit that has the most blue on it. I think they actually did it really well. This sort of like a V shape that comes down her torso looks great. And I like the sort of like white wave design that's sort of cascading up. But then the gunmetal gray 
story parts feel very high tech. She's got lots of different pouches and whatnot. It definitely feels like an outfit meant for traversing a jungle, which is entirely what it's meant to be. And then the blue arms are a nice touch too, to help keep this figure different from previous like Gunmetal Grey Nia suits. The only part I don't like about this figure is the hairpiece. Every other ninja got a new headband hairpiece for this wave, and Nia did end up getting one just in the following wave, so I wish I had been introduced here because it definitely would have fit a little bit better, or at the very least just recolor that silver headband to be blue instead because she doesn't really use silver at all anymore. However, that's a very minor thing and the rest of this figure just looks so good that it doesn't really bother me too much. And of course, it's very easy to customize if you wanted to. There's a full look at that torso print with everything removed. And there's a look at her back torso print where you can see she just got like her symbol in the center. Yeah, that just looks really good. Like, I'm just so impressed how they incorporated all the different colors so perfectly. Genuinely yet another one of my favorites. Oh, and also the blue half mask was a nice touch. I think it actually fits her really well. And again, does a great job of incorporating that color all throughout. Yeah, all around one that I'm very, very happy with. Again, I wish it came in more than one set. Now coming to Ninjago Legacy in 2021, here are the two Nia minifigures that we got. We of course had 10th Anniversary Golden Nia, and then we have the Casual Nia that came in the Ninjago City Gardens. 10th Anniversary Golden Nia, in terms of just design, I really like. It's probably one of my favorites. Just like all the other Golden Ninjas, she sort of has a belt that has a bit of her element on it, as well as her element represented by like printing on the side. You can see she's got like these waves right here. But I think blue and gold is just a great color combination. I love the blue trim on the golden robe. And this sort of like tan undershirt is an interesting touch, but I actually think it works really well. Then of course she has an all new hairpiece for this figure, which is that headband hairpiece that I mentioned. Definitely should have been on her island figure, but I'm happy at the very least they included it here and it definitely fits in pretty well. And then she's got that same half mask that her island figure had, which does look really cool and fits really well with everything. But yeah, I just feel like this figure is super elegant all around and it's just a fantastic design. Taking everything off, there's a full look at her torso print and looking at her back torso, she's of course got a symbol right there. There's like a wave crashing out the back and then more of that blue and white bell. My only real complaint with this figure is that it doesn't really represent anything. All the other 10th anniversary figures are meant to represent a certain season, like Kai and Zayn are season 11, Jay season 12, Cole season 13, Lloyd is kind of season 14 though, not exactly, and then Nia here I guess is kind of similar to her appearance in Seabound like after she goes energy, but it's not entirely accurate. Like this hairpiece was new for this figure, she never had it before, so I would have preferred maybe something a little bit different that actually represented Ninjago's history better. So as a standalone figure I really like it, but in terms of a 10th anniversary figure, it could have been better. However, I will give it a bit of a pass because it is really good at what it's trying to be. And then Casual Nia is exactly the same as the movie Casual Nia. However, now those ripped jeans have been replaced with unprinted blue jeans. Normally, I wouldn't count a figure like this because it is just reused parts. However, this is the one and only Nia figure to come with like these unprinted legs. So I guess technically it is an exclusive Nia figure. But yeah, it's exactly the same as the other one, just a little bit worse. Happy to see that the torso is still being produced. And I guess if you missed out in the movie sets, this is a nice way to get Casual Nia. But yeah, it's nothing all too interesting. Oh, and I guess the headpiece was updated to the modern one as well. Now we come to Seabound and we had two Nia minifigures this wave. We have Scuba Nia and Energy Nia. Both of these I think are really fantastic and again some of my favorites. Scuba Nia I really like because they sort of turn our color scheme on its head. Instead of using Gunmetal Grey as the base color and blue as the secondary color, instead now blue is the focus here which is touches the Gunmetal Grey. I think long term this would be a bad thing but for like one one-off suit I actually think it works really well. Her torso and legs have like lots of these little metallic dots on them sort of similar to her SOG suit which that's a really cool touch to help this feel like very detailed. And then it uses Gunmetal Grey for like all the mechanical designs like of the actual scuba outfit which I think was the right choice. It's a cool way to like incorporate the color scheme while also fitting like with the overall aesthetic of the suit. And then all the scuba suits incorporate like this bright orange or yellow in some way. And while it works on some and not so much in others, I actually think the yellow is a nice contrast with the blue and the two colors go together surprisingly well. The Gunmetal Grey belt is really cool too, I've never really seen that before. I think all around it just looks fantastic. It looks like a scuba outfit, but fits Nia really well. Despite being so different from every other Nia suit, it might actually be one of my favorites. I really, really like this one. Removing her scuba gear, there's a full look at her torso and leg print. And then there's the back torso print again, where there's more of that like silver design. I genuinely think this is a near perfect figure. Nia figures are really, really good a lot of the time. And this one is no exception. I really like how it turned out. But then we come to Energy Nia, who might be even better. This figure is so, so, so cool. Of course, this is meant to represent Nia after she has merged with the sea, and wow, they made a super unique minifigure out of it. First, she's got like this wave leg attachment to make it look like she's rising out of the water, and then she's got like these four water tendrils at her back. Now, I'm going to remove like this tail piece just so we can take a look at her up a little bit closer. However, first, I just wanted to show off like how she looks like with her full presence. This thing just looks amazing on display. 
represents the character so perfectly. I really love it when it has like everything on it. Or I guess not everything on it, because the one part about this figure I don't like is that mask piece. Just the color is entirely wrong, and she never really wore a mask in the show. However, that's very easy to take off, and that's what I do with mine. I just don't display mine with the mask. And with the mask piece off there, you can see her face print a little bit better. Starting with the torso though, you can see she's literally just like made of water. She's got like this wave cascading on her torso. Her one arm is entirely trans light blue. And then the other arm's dark blue, which I'm not the biggest fan of. If they were going to do that, I would have appreciated at least some printing on there to sort of represent like hey it's water but of course since like printing is a higher budget i think two transparent arms would have been better but even still that's very easily customized if you wanted to and i think the dark blue arm is fine especially like with the power blast in her hand and i love the transition like from the torso into the legs it just looks like it's meant to be one cohesive thing she's just a series of cascading waves though i don't like how the printing sort of cuts off at the bottom that's not noticeable when you actually have the wave attachment on but when you have it off it looks a little bit weird it would have been nice if that design continued all the way down or if she at the very least had some toe printing. But since you're usually be displaying her like with the full tail attachment, I guess that's not the biggest deal. But now that face print, that face print is so, so cool. So many different just like subtle metallic blue colors used. And the actual piece they used for her face is like this off white color. That hair piece too is again the headband hair piece. They're do molding like the sparkly blue and dark blue for the headband. That looks amazing and it sort of looks like her ponytail at the back is like dripping water. And then taking that off, you can see that full face print. I love all the dark blue markings. And the metallic blue markings at the bottom look great too. Blue lips are awesome. Them. I love the metallic blue eyes as well. And then on the back, she of course has an outrider back attachment to attach those tendrils. And removing that, you can see her back torso print, where she has her symbol in the center, and then just sort of like a whirlpool surrounding it. All around, this is one of the best Ninjago minifigures of all time. Not a traditional ninja suit, obviously, but still really, really good for what it is. Yeah, this might be up there as one of my favorite minifigures ever, too. I really, really like this one. And now, coming to 2022 in core, here is the Nia minifigure that was released with that wave. We, of course, have Core Nia. And I just reviewed this figure four times, covering this year's core sets, as well as reviewing it a bunch last year, so I've talked about this figure a lot. But in short, I think it's fine. It's very similar to, like, Season 11 Nia, though I think a bit worse. Not a fan of, like, this one entirely blue arm she has, though the design of the actual torso is pretty cool with, like, these blue waves. Don't know how I feel about, like, the silver undershirt in the center. I mean, it's unique, but I much prefer when they give her, like, a blue undershirt instead. And then the legs being gray instead of gunmetal gray. Eh, I don't know. I'm not the biggest fan of that. I mean, it's different at the very least, but it just sort of makes them look a little bit worse, because there's not a huge difference between those two colors. But when you know Notice it's just like, huh, why aren't those the same? But yeah, then she just has her season 11 hood, but unprinted. And then turning her around, she's got like that ninja symbol at the back that all the core suits have, as well as more of that like rounded water design. Yeah, I don't have a ton to say about this figure because I've talked about it many, many, many times before, but it's fine for what it is. Far from one of my favorites, but it's not one that I hate to get. And then finally, the most recent Nia figure, we have the crystallized Samurai X Nia. It was pretty cool to see her go back to Samurai X. And I really love how they redesigned her here. They stuck with like her ninja color scheme while also incorporating some gold, as well as calling back to the dark red on her belt right here. And I actually think this figure turned out pretty great. I really love like this new head crest piece as a really fun way to mix things up. The golden mouth guard's really cool too. And the Mr. E armor, while I feel like it's definitely overused nowadays, I think it works pretty well. And then of course she's got the original Samurai X logo in the center. The blue armored base looks pretty good. As I just mentioned, really love the dark red belt and I like how it's tipped on the ends with gold. And then the gunmetal legs too to call back to her ninja suits. Yeah, I think this is a very solid figure all around. I would not call it my favorite Samurai X outfit, but again, I love how different it is from every other one. And in fact, I love how pretty much every Samurai X outfit is not like any of the others. Like, there's some similarities, but each one is unique in their own way, and each one has their own distinct color scheme, and this one is definitely the most different of any of them. Removing her helmet there, you can get a slightly better look at her torso, and then turning around, there's her back torso print, where it's just sort of meant to look sort of bulky and armored. Yeah, I like this figure for how unique it is. It's definitely not one of my favorites, but certainly not bad by any means either. I still quite like it, and I'm happy to have it in my collection. And wait, hold on, we're not done yet. There's two final Nia minifigures to cover in this video. We have Kabuki Nia and Future Nia. Kabuki Nia came in a Bricktober pack in 2018, and of course is based off her appearance from Season 4 Tournament of Elements, and Future Nia came out in 2021, and is based off her appearance in Season 5 Possession. Starting with Kabuki Nia, this is one of the best Ninjago minifigures ever. It is really, really well done. Her design seems to be based off her 2011 outfit, carrying over a lot of the design aspects that that had. However, in different colors and with a lot more detail. I especially love like the little white dragons that it has going on. Those are super cool. And the gold trim around the cloth that hangs down looks really great too. Her face print you can see is very similar to her redesigned face print, though just without the mold pretty much. However, it fits well enough for original design Nia too. However, in my opinion, the coolest part about this figure is actually the arm printing, where she's just got like this little wristband on. And that's the wristband that she wore on the show that would like call her Samurai X armor to her. And that was never actually represented on any official Samurai X Nia minifigure. So it's very cool to finally 
only get that here. It helps this minifigure really feel extra detailed. And then turning around, you can see she does have an alternate face, but she has a more neutral expression. As well as back towards her printing where there's more of those white dragons. And like a little apron is tied in a bow back here. Just a fantastic minifigure all around. Definitely not a necessary minifigure, but super unique and a very cool one to get. Very happy to exist and very happy to have it in my collection. And then finally, we have Future Nia, which came out in 2021. And this figure is okay. It's cool to get more of the future figures because they were seen in the show. However, this one's not entirely accurate. I mean, I think the torso and legs are accurate enough. But you can see the face print is a new face print with her old hair. And neither of those are accurate to the show. She had a different hair piece in the show. And obviously, she had her original face design, though it looked a bit older. So I wish they'd given us a new face print hair piece here. However, using your own parts, you could probably make a decent custom. And then the torso and legs are fine. I mean, they're accurate to the show. But again, sort of like Legacy Nia, this just feels like a worse version of Possession Nia. Same gold, blue, and red color scheme. Though the blue is not super prevalent here, and she actually uses dark blue on the legs. The legs themselves, too, I feel like are very plain. And the silver armor at the top is an interesting touch. I can't say I'm the biggest fan of it, but again, it is show accurate, so I can't complain too much. And there's a back towards the print where you can see she has like the more watery version of her phoenix symbol, as well as more of that silver armor. Yeah, I think this figure's fine. I'm happy it exists, but I wish it was just a little bit better because it's not entirely show accurate. Torso and legs are fine, but I feel like this figure really doesn't serve any purpose other than just to be like, huh, okay, I finally have that. Like, I feel like the only purpose it serves is to give us another thing from the show. All on its own, it doesn't hold up too well. But there you go. There is every single Lego Ninjago Nia minifigure, at least from 2011 to early 2023. I say early because, of course, I'm filming this in January. We could very well get a new Nia minifigure in the second half of this year, and in fact, I think that's pretty likely. But yeah, as of right now, so far, this is all we got. So let me know in the comments, out of all these figures, which was your favorite, which was your least favorite, and what do you think of these Nia minifigures overall, just like as a whole? Personally, I think Nia probably has the best selection of minifigures of all the different ninja. Like, hers are pretty consistently good. She really doesn't have too many figures that I'm, like, not a fan of. And even her worst figures are just, like, fine. They're not even bad. Her best figures, though, are some of my favorite minifigures of all time. Not just from Ninjago, but just from Lego overall. I also find it really interesting how different every Nia minifigure is. It's like, going back to my other videos, with, like, Kai especially, a lot of his figures can be very samey. But with Nia, every minifigure is really distinct. There's really not two that look super alike. I think that's in part due to Nia not having a consistent color scheme over the years. She went through many different iterations over the years, and of course she was Samurai X first, and then she was a ninja. Yeah, I think overall the designers did a great job with these. My favorite ninja suits would definitely have to be Hands of Time Nia, SOG Nia, and Energy Nia. And then Samurai X actually really like Rebooted. I also really love the original 2011 Nia suit. And then of course Kabuki Nia is really great too. Oh, Hunted Nia too, of course, in the ninja suits. That's another one of my favorites. But yeah, despite having not nearly as many figures as a lot of the other ninja, I think overall a lot of Nia's figures are really great. So I think she might be the most solid collection overall. But of course, those are just my thoughts. You guys have to let me know what you guys think in the comments below. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, of course, this is the sixth ninja that I've covered. So if you want to see any of the other five, go click the card on the top right corner to the full playlist. But as for this video, I think it's about all I have to say. So thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, you could leave the video a like, as well as subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.